Shields up, Ironbreakers. Today we're going to be talking about the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree situation. And right now I hear you ask, situation? What is the situation? I jumped into the DLC and I've been having an absolute blast with it. What is this situation you speak of, Rurikan? And that would be what I would expect from a majority of my audience, due to the simple fact that I believe this DLC is some of the best work that From Software has ever done. I think the DLC is absolutely phenomenal and I've been having an absolute blast playing through it. Now it is also important to mention that at this point I still haven't finished the DLC because I've been too busy editing episodes that I've been posting on the channel and therefore there's going to be a couple of people that are going to jump into the comment section saying stuff like, oh just wait until you get to the final boss, you're going to get absolutely wrecked, you're going to be the one giving this game a negative review on Steam. And to those people I would like to point out, well, I mean, at this point I've beaten six Remembrance bosses, which are considered to be the main bosses of the DLC. I've beaten plenty more optional bosses, I actually don't even know exactly how many I've beaten. And I've explored, I think, over 80% of the map, and the reason I say I think is because I don't know how, man how many more things uh, from software might have hidden away in dark corners that I might have missed but just judging from the amount of verticality of stuff that I've explored and just the overall map distribution, I think that 80% is a fairly fair number. Might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but that's pretty much where I land right now. So 80% of the map explored, six Remembrance bosses defeated, plenty more other bosses defeated. I kind of feel like I'm still in a pretty good position to say, I think this DLC is phenomenal. And even if the final boss ends up being more challenging than what I would expect and completely clears me out, right? Just murders me repeatedly and I'm stuck in there for five hours or whatever. And even if I end up not liking that, which, you know, just because you're stuck in there for a long time doesn't mean you don't like it. I was just stuck on a boss for two hours last night. But even if that happens, does that mean that the rest of the content that I have done somehow becomes irrelevant you know so it's like even though i don't know if the final boss might be harder than what i would expect maybe i won't like it that doesn't mean that everything that i've done up until this point is not good which it is which i did like and right now i know that a lot of people are going to be asking okay so, but how did you beat him did you use summons did you do this did you do that i haven't used any summon up until this point to get any clear in the game whether that is a player summon or an ash summon or anything like that and we're going to be talking more about summons in a few minutes here in the video. I would just like to point that out for the people that will, you know, say that I'm using this strategy that is somehow not valid in their head because of reasons. But anyway, if you still haven't understood what is happening, the game is getting negatively reviewed on Steam. And there's a bunch of people quitting the game and uninstalling it and completely saying bad stuff about it on social media, saying that this is terrible, the bosses aren't fair, and that, you know, this is some of the worst content that From Software has ever done because they're getting too shot by everything, so on and so forth. So there's basically an overall negative sentiment around this. To give you guys an idea, right now the overall reviews specifically for the DLC of Elden Ring are at 62% positive out of 23,000 user reviews. Now, in my opinion, this is just uh, a lot of people that maybe weren't expecting it to be as challenging as it is. I mean, that clearly seems to be the case considering the complaints. However, there are also a lot of people that are complaining about the performance of the game. So let me just point this out, which is I personally haven't experienced any significant performance issues with the game. I've played most of the game on my 6900 XT. It's been running fine. I didn't have any driver updates or anything, so I, it didn't really need a driver update for it to run fine. It's working pretty good on my computer, and at this point, I don't think that a 6900 XT is like this top-tier GPU. There's much better GPUs out there. Now, I don't know what everybody else's experience is, but I do believe that leaving a negative review because you're having performance issues is reasonable, assuming that your hardware is adequate for the game. That is what I'm going to say about that. You know, PC hardware, there's tons of variation there, so there's not a whole lot more to say. There might be some performance issues. I personally haven't experienced those. But I understand if people did, and I do think that that warrants a negative review on Steam until they eventually fix it. But on the other hand, the negative reviews that are complaining about the game being too hard, I don't necessarily think that those are being particularly fair. Because there is 
kind of like this stigma in the community about using tools like spirit ashes and summons, as we were talking about earlier, that I even had to qualify some of the statements that I've made about the difficulty in this DLC with the fact that, no, I haven't used summons. No, I haven't used any of that. And if you don't believe me, feel free to watch the playthrough, which is public on the channel right now, and you will see that everything I've killed up until this point, which will be episode, I don't know, 12 or 13 or something like that, I haven't used ash summons or any type of summons. But that's not to say that you can't or shouldn't use them. If you are struggling, you should definitely use Ash Summons. The game is designed for you to use these. I've been saying this since the beginning. People have had this notion in their head that's like, oh, using Ash Summons is bad. And let me just tell you something very specific here, which is if you do not use all of the tools that are provided to you, you are, for all intents and purposes, playing the game on a harder difficulty. Which is fine, if that is what you want to do. But if you are choosing to play the game at a harder difficulty, why are you then complaining that the game is too hard? You have the tools to, you know, to adapt to your own skill level. You have the tools to be like, oh, I can pull out a spirit ash and it'll help me. I can summon an NPC. I can summon another player. Do you really think that all of these systems are in the game and Miyazaki's gonna look down on you if you don't use them? What, what are we talking about here? This is insane. Like, again, I understand people wanting to challenge themselves. I think that's reasonable. But if you've reached the limit of your own skill, then maybe it's time to play the game at its intended difficulty, which might happen to me. Like, if I get to that final boss and I'm stuck in there for hours on end and I feel like, hey, you know what? I think it's time to pull out a Spirit Ash. You think I'm going to hesitate? I don't care. I don't care if some random person on the internet is going to come at me and go like, ah, uh, you didn't really beat it. You used the Spirit Ash Summon. Guess how I beat Melania? Mimic Tear. You're goddamn right I used Mimic Tear on Melania. It was being very frustrating. And I was like, nah, screw that. I picked up Mimic Tear and we beat the crap out of her. Still took me a while to beat her because Melania is very challenging. I got my ass handed to me. That's not to say that I couldn't eventually beat her regularly. That was just to say that like, hey, I don't feel like wasting any more time. I'm going to kill you. And I killed her. Now, again, there is this notion that spirit ashes are a crutch and whatnot, which is nonsense. I mean, Miyazaki literally implemented a specific upgrade system into the game for the DLC that makes your spirit ashes stronger. If you are purposefully gimping yourself and not using them, that is your choice. And therefore, you are making the game harder for yourself. This whole notion that like, oh, you should never use Spirit Ashes, that's just like, that is a construct of the community. And it is from a very loud minority. Because real players that play this game, right, most of the influential figures in this community, they don't care if you use Spirit Ashes or not. What they care is whether or not you're having a good time. We all want everybody to have a good time in Elden Ring and in Shadow of the Earth Tree. That is the whole point, is to have fun and to experience that exhilaration of beating the boss. That is the whole... The bosses are designed to be beaten! But the interesting thing here is, we've been talking about the potential of the final boss being super hard and all of this stuff, which again, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. But a majority of complaints that I've seen on social media is from people that are dying at the first boss. They're saying the first boss of the game is unfair. Now I would like to call out your attention to what I said previously. I'm not an amazing Souls player. Actually, I don't know if I said that in this take or not, but I'm not. I'm not the most impressive Souls player out there, not by a long shot. And anybody who watches my streams can tell that. I'm not amazing at it. I'm okay, I feel like, in some situations. You know, mid to mid-low, that would be like what I would consider my level of skill to be. So you should look at it as kind of like, oh, if Rurikon can beat this, anybody can beat this because he's not amazing at the game. That's what you should look at. And even me, I beat the first boss on my second try. It, it really is not that hard. I think one of the problems that we're experiencing right now is that a lot of people have been away from the game for two years. Maybe not two years, maybe a year and change, whatever, depending on how long you actually played it. And then they ju just jumped into the DLC Cold Turkey and they got humbled real fast. This is one of the reasons why I started playing uh, Elden Ring again ahead of the DLC because I wanted to get my muscle memory back. I wanted to be able to, you know, do stuff fast and react to what is happening on screen fast to be prepared for when the DLC comes out. 
And I just feel like a lot of people jumped into the DLC cold turkey and they're getting completely destroyed because their muscle memory is not there. And it's going to take you a while to get used to the game again. That's how this has always been when it comes to DLCs for either, you know, Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 3 or Dark Souls 2. Like, that's how it's always been. If you've been away from the game for too long, you're going to jump back into the DLC. You're, you're going to get humbled. That's just the way that it is because your muscle memory is not there. So you have a combination of all of these situations wherein there's somewhat of a stigma associated with Spirit Ashes. There's uh, the fact that there's a lot of people that are jumping into the DLC after being away from the game for God knows how many years. And there's the, the whole thing about you're not supposed to also summon other players or summon helpful NPCs or use all of these tools that the game gives you to tailor your own level of challenge organically without having like a setting in a menu. And you're basically forcing yourself to play on a hard mode and then complaining that the game is too hard. This is absolutely wild to me. And this is not even talking about the fact that there's a lot of people who had really overpowered builds in the base game. And they were used to just like walking all over mobs and whatnot and just destroying everything. And then they get onto the DLC and they're like, wait a minute, these mobs are actually dealing damage to me. What is this? I am the Elden Lord. I should be all powerful. And it's like, did you really wanted a DLC that was going to be a cakewalk because you have an overpowered build in the base game? Because that's another thing that I, I've seen so many videos about this. I've consumed a ton of media on this. I've seen videos, I've seen social media posts, I've seen on some of these reviews people saying like, oh, my build used to be really good and then I got to the DLC and I got humbled. Yeah, Miyazaki wants you to experience that sense of progression again and you can't do that if your build is just broken overpowered and you're gonna tear through the whole DLC. It doesn't work like that. The DLC has its own upgrade system and the form of the Shadu Tree fragments, I'm, I'm saying Shadu Tree, I know that some people say Skadu Tree, Scuba Tree, Whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about. There's the whole new upgrade system with the Skadoo Tree Fragments. And a lot of people are maybe not engaging with it meaningfully enough. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why people are struggling this much. Because I feel like there really isn't that much reason to. But that's just my thoughts on it. I, I think that there's a, a combination of factors here. Where people are completely losing their minds. But another important thing is that I feel like right now the discourse is being ruled by a lot of the people that got to the DLC, they weren't having fun of the DLC, they immediately quit the DLC and they're like, no, I'm done, Not never playing this again. I've seen people uninstall the game in a fit of rage right now. <laughs> We're just like, damn. Okay, but the interesting thing is if we go to the Steam charts, it actually paints a very different picture, okay? I'm talking about, right now it is Sunday, so there's a lot of people playing, but it's like noon in Portugal, so this is not peak hour at all for a majority of the gaming community. This is completely off peak hour. And an hour ago, there was almost 600,000 people playing the game with a 24-hour peak of 780,000 people playing it, okay? And an all-time peak of 952k. I think this is probably around the, the release of Elden Ring, most likely, when those happen. But fundamentally, you're talking about a ridiculous amount of concurrent players on Steam alone. This is not counting, you know, people playing on PlayStation and all this stuff. I also feel that a majority of the community is quite simply too busy playing the game to actually give their input out there. They're like, no, I'm, st I'm steering clear. And I think that in a, a, a week or so, we are going to see a very different picture painted. But this is something that is very familiar to me and feels very personal to me because I've lived a situation very similar to this in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now, for those of you that only follow me for Souls Likes, you might not be aware of what happened during the Monster Hunter World Iceborne days. But Capcom added two new monsters to the game. This was like a free update. Uh, one of which wasn't even planned, but they were like, hey, the community said they would like to see this monster. So they made this monster and they made one of the coolest encounters that we've ever gotten in Monster Hunter, which was the Fatalis encounter and the Alatreon encounter. Although the Alatreon was uh, a planned encounter. But fundamentally what happened there was that these bosses were so hard, but they had very specific mechanics that you had to do. 
and people were used to just playing the game a certain way and they didn't want it to deal with this mechanic of elemental damage wherein you had to deal a certain amount of elemental damage to trigger certain things to happen during the Alatreon fight and people were like but i want to use my blast weapon that i've used all the time and the boss doesn't let me use my blast weapon <laughs> And then they went on to the forums and they review bombed the game over the fact that they got filtered by a fucking boss in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And I had to sit there and watch this happen because there was nothing I can do to stop it. Just like now, I have to sit here and watch this happen of people bad-mouthing this amazing DLC for no goddamn reason because they refuse to either adapt their existing builds and adapt to what they should be doing in the DLC or they refuse to use all of the tools the game gives to them they make the experience harder for themselves and then they go to social media and bitch about it you know what I have to say when I went into the steam powered uh, forums like the you know the, the steam page where the reviews are I went in there and I just went like it smells like bitch in here. <laughs>